Welcome to the Phoenix Force deck guide. What I'm going to do is take some clips of certain games. Uh, I will almost definitely include losses just to talk through those. Uh, and we will use four different decks. So this deck on the screen right now is the one that I made the Reddit post for. Uh, and some of these links I will put in the comments. Uh, so since then, the meta has kind of shifted. So I wanted to play around with removing Enchantress and using Alaya. So I will definitely show, the first deck I'll show is this one, the one I just showed. And then this is the deck we will end with. Uh, again, I just took out Enchantress and put Eliath uh, as a finisher. And then I will show two others. One is the original version I posted a deck guide for, which I'll have links, uh, a link as well. Uh, that one used Torch. It's very susceptible or vulnerable to Killmonger. Uh, and you're also abandoning one lane by using Zola. And then on a budget, so you don't have Eliath, you don't have Nimrod, you don't have Nico, Ghost Spider, the more expensive cards. So we will give this deck a whirl. Uh, it's theoretical, and we'll just kind of see how it goes and see how, how it does. It, it probably will perform worse, uh, but it still potentially is an option. Hmm. The reason I included Vision in here is because it's a movable target, uh, and it so they have to guess where it's going to end up. Uh, so that gives me a little bit of uh, unpredictability. Okay, let's see. So this is what I'm going. This is how I'm going to play it. I am going to play Human Torch now. And then I'm going to play Carnage and Iron Fist. Moves at one location to the left. And then I'm going to play Phoenix Force after it to get that uh, burst on the Phoenix Force. Uh, the free move, essentially. Now, if I don't have priority, it is a little risky that they could play something to disrupt my play. And I don't have priority. So we're playing both mid. I'm going to see if I can't get the plus three energy. Okay, and then we just kind of hope we get Zola. And I'm gonna play. I'm gonna move Human Torch back mid, and play Vision mid. And maybe if they play something big, I can use Shang Chi. But this game is coming together pretty nicely. And I also can't tell if this is a junk. Wow. Okay, that was unexpected. Okay, it is not a junk, it is a bounce version. Okay, now do I want priority? And because it's a bounce version, they definitely don't run Killmonger. So now I just need to decide if I want priority or not. If I don't want priority, I probably play everything mid, move everything mid. 
but it also doesn't matter with the plus three energy. I will... I'll take priority. Because then I could Sean, just do a blind Sean. Because I don't have Zola in hand either. So we're going to see if I can't duck priority. And then I can just blindly throw Shang-Chi in a lane. Um, I'm going to have priority. Yikes. And no Zola, I just can't can't draw him to save my life. Do I stay in this game? I stay. So this is probably a hit monkey deck, which is why I didn't want priority. Because they're probably going to play their hit monkey over here. If I didn't think it was a hit monkey deck, I'd just move my vision and maybe play Forge over here. But because it's a hit monkey deck, and they've they have three cards in deck still, we'll assume they drew their hit monkey. So move that over here. This is 12, 14 points here. And we will play Forge here. And this here, if they play a Demon mid, that's 18. Okay, and let's just see what they what they played mid. Okay, I, I called the demon mid. And did math correctly. So there you go. That's what the budget deck looks like. Uh, unfortunately, no Zola. But uh, as you can see, this deck can win. Alright, now with this version, I seem to be drawing Zola. Hardly anybody plays into Orchis Forge, uh, but right as I say that, they do. So a high Evo deck. Should be prepared for Leech. And so, because Leech might be a factor, and I am a heavy uh, on-reveal deck, I, uh, I forget where I was going with that. Play this mid. Okay, not a good decision. Oh, they're going to spread all over the place, but I can move it back. <sighs> so, because they run... Because they run Leech, I, I just can't snap. So, if anything, this would be a... Turn five snap. And the thing is, Zola will actually uh, 
giving me negative one at the location, which kind of stinks. Move, move torch there, move it back mid. Was torch the last card I played for energy? Yes. And then let's see, what else can I play? Play a death lock just for stats. Oh man, this is a... Yeah, I'm going to have priority. I'm easily winning tiebreaker. And ideally they get filled up left. There it is. Oh, you, multiple man messed me up. Oh, multiple man messed me up. <laughs> multiple man. Oh. All right, YOLO 50-50. Nice. So that's a good uh, call out right there. Uh, I should have been much more aware and held on to multiple man. This deck is all about managing board space and I did not manage my board space. With Arnim Zola, you want empty lanes and multiple man sticky. So if you don't have to play them, don't play them. Against Pixel Art Demian. Deviance. Spawning Vats is actually uh, nice as long as I'm not playing a destroy deck. It's a Loki deck, it looks like. Need to be aware of uh, the Bear and the Hawk. I always favor multiple man if I have dag if I have both him and dagger in hand. Even though with cloning vats, it could be nice, but they might take it out from under me. Okay, perfect. I got my destroy card before Sakaar pulls Phoenix Force out of my hand. Right on cue. I am snapping this. So I wasn't sure before, but now I hate snapping after I see the play. But if you see the play, snap as early as possible. Don't let the game continue out. And the reason you don't let the game continue out is because you don't want your opponent to draw into cards that they need to win. So once you have the advantage, uh, snap and ideally it's before now if Phoenix Force was not grabbed uh, you know there's actually an argument to be made that I should have snapped I should have snapped before because it didn't matter what Sakar grabbed if it grabbed something else no problem if it grabbed Phoenix Force no problem so I definitely should have snapped before. Alrighty, up against Solsta. Boy, this hand looks fantastic. Turn one snap. This is a fantastic hand. While I don't have all of the pieces I would want, I have enough of them where I'm just going to snap. Not a Thanos deck. 
the plus two spell. I don't care about that for now. And with Titan... Oh, it doesn't get destroyed anymore. Never mind. Uh, because a an, an enemy Eliath works differently. It doesn't destroy my card anymore. Because you used to be able to resurrect that destroyed card with Phoenix Force. We'll just play down the Nico. Into the Shuri here. Or do I play Shuri? We play Shuri into Danger Room. The reason being, if Danger Room procs the Nimrod, goes off on the Nimrod, that's fantastic. Okay, and we have Sean and uh, Carnage in hand, depending on what they're shuri, what they're shurying. Yikes! They can't move it. They do have priority. They could play an armor. Let's see how this goes. Carnage and Deshaun should be good enough. Is it good enough? Do I win a tiebreaker if Carnage gets destroyed? Yes, I would win the tiebreaker. Yep. Victory. So there you go. Uh, strong win. This is why Shang-Chi is in the deck. And if you have Sean in hand, you want to make... You want to be very aware if you want to sh save the carnage because you can play out the last turn exactly how it got played out. DZ three row or DZ third. You can be the judge. All right, we have Shuri Nimrod. They played Hood right which could mean junk or bounce or a combination. We have Shuri, Nimrod, and Ghost Spider in hand. Things are looking kind of good. I'm snapping. I have enough pieces in hand now. Uh, they don't know what deck I'm playing. So right now I'm thinking, do I want to Shuri Nimrod in this lane? That way my Nimrod gets a plus two. I have Ghost Spider to yank it out. That's probably what I will do. I'd expect them to play Sentry here. And if so, we might be in a little bit of trouble. I'm going to have to play out the Widow's Bite, aren't I? Yeah, because I want one more Destroy card. Now, where do I play the Widow's Bite? I could play it right for the plus two. If they play... Annihilus... I'm going to play it mid. And then I'm probably... All systems go. I don't know what I'm doing. Is this a... You think this is a Galactus? This might be Galactus. And so if it is Galactus, I want to do this and, I mean, okay. So if it was Galactus, the reason I'm playing here is uh, Galactus goes off, Carnage destroys, Carnage is up to six. Six beats Galactus is five. Okay, so I beat Galactus with this play. 
Also, if they think I'm going to destroy the Nimrod here and they play Eliath, uh, Eliath doesn't win this lane and I could still carnage this lane. There were a lot of unknowns for them. But I also win by playing, by yanking uh, Nimrod over here. Carnage destroys all of this junk. I throw mid, which is okay, because this side gets another 12 power. And so, and this side goes up to 20. So I kind of had all my bases covered. You only need to win two lanes. Okay, up against Shoryuken. We have multiple man, destroy, Shuri, decent hand. Uh, part of me is thinking maybe I play into Atlantis so I get priority, but it is a Ella discard deck. So that is less important. Uh, but I am still going to play into Atlantis just to... Because uh, I want to play safe. I don't know what's the, what the unknown, unknown location is. Negative zone stinks. And I should have played into the unknown location. Okay, I have Ghost Spider. So we will Deathlock. They didn't do anything. They have an infinite. I I don't actually want priority. That way I could Sean. But uh, I fear we're going to have priority. Okay, do these in a good order, please. Please. I think it did it in the... Oh, wow. What a... Well, not the perfect order. Sean going first would have been even better. Oh, the... Dumb, uh... Doc Ock isn't... Isn't, uh... 10 points of power. Six months, so that's three. This is a bad stay, but it's the last game. Uh, I'd retreat here. Uh, I'm just barely winning. If they play a hella, they win. So this is where you hit retreat now. But we won't do that just to play out this game. <laughs> they went to the casino and lost. Nice. Starting off with a uh, 2,000 ranked player. Well, this is the best hand I could possibly get. So we have to snap here. If I can't win this game, uh, I should just retire this deck. And we are against the Thanos player, so I should be good. Because we have multiple man into Venom, into Phoenix Force, GG's. And I'm playing mid because I definitely don't want a Sentinel. This was an unknown location. And so my destroy card, what do I want to use? So if I have a choice between Venom and Deathlock, I choose Deathlock first. The reason being, I can always play Venom later, and Venom will capture the power. But if I play Deathlock later, 
he's destroying the power there. So that's only valuable if I'm playing a junk deck. And this is not a junk deck. Okay. And Thanos is a deck. Okay, so. Decisions. I could. Nico. And then Phoenix Force Ghost Spider. Or I could just Phoenix Force and then Ghost Spider next turn. But also there's Dagger. And it's a Zoo deck. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Nico. And then let's see if she uh, works on the opposite side of the field. And then I'm going to play Phoenix Force after. And then for my last turn... What is this location? Okay, so they get my Phoenix Force. That's no problem. And then for my last turn, I can use Dagger and Ghost Spider to put 14 points in a lane. So as we wait patiently for Castle Zemo... Okay, this here, this here. The reason I'm playing it left is because it will move mid. And then on the last turn, this will probably have four cards. So I want to go spider. I want to dagger a different lane, go spider it over here. And then I can move the multiple in. Okay, and I have priority. They don't have a discounted scar. Thank you, Nico. Okay, so I think we have all our bases covered. They can move vision here, but they would also have to play something else here. So, uh, I will have enough energy to play Venom, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to risk Sean in multiple places. So we will put 16 power here. This is at 13. This goes up to 21. And then we play Dagger. Oh, hold on. I can actually play Carnage. So we will Carnage first to get four there. And then we will play Dagger and Ghost Spider to get plus 14. I'm assuming they will have four cards here. And even if they don't, that still should be enough. So we're challenging all three lanes. Interesting. Okay, so this should just be an easy win. Because we know we're getting 14 here. Mid they didn't contest. Or at least 14. And there you go. Easy stuff. Alright, we have a decent opening hand. That's fine. What an interesting deck you're running. I'm not going to be able to take advantage of Krakoa. Hmm... Okay, this is actually going to be uh, 
an interesting game. But I should be okay. So I need to deactivate Aunt Maze. I have Shuri Nimrod, Ghost Spider, and my double destroy. And the perfect double destroy I need, a three cost and a two cost, so I can play Ghost Spider. So even if they knock my cards all over the place, oh, snap. I will be good. So I don't need my cards moving on me last turn. Even though I could probably play Ghost Spider there. Oh, this is going to be kind of an annoying deck. But I also have destroy cards, should I need it. So we will play Nimrod into the... Shuri works off of a location, so don't get fooled. Shuri moved. Uh, if you hold the card over, you'll see this little grid behind. So that means that's the location that Shuri's card is active in. And then what we will do is we will go spider to the mid, assuming I still have three spots. We will go spider to the left, <laughs> assuming I still have three spots. And then we will... We will throw a location. Or we don't need to throw a location. We could go wide. Uh, going wide would mean I play Carnage here and bounce Venom, use Venom over here because then I'm winning all three locations. So we'll go that route. Uh, but this scares the crap out of me because this deck, they lost Stegron. Uh, Maybe they play Juggernaut. Uh, Juggernaut's scary, because if Juggernaut bounces my Venom over here... Hmm. Oh, roll the dice. Yep, and there's Juggernaut. Please go mid. Hallelujah. Yeah, and honestly, I should have played around that. Six and ten, so that's sixteen, so I should win all lanes. Perfect. So you see, I called it. I, the reason I didn't play around that is, one, it was going to be a 50-50. And two, I didn't know for sure that they had Juggernaut in their deck. So I probably should have played around it anyway. Uh, and just played Venom mid instead of right. When you when you lose sight of uh, how exactly you're going to win, you should retreat. Okay, get rid of one clog. Okay, this is snap worthy. Once I see Nico destroy and a destroy target... I'm snapping. I already have my other win line in hand, Shuri, part of that. So all I need to draw is Nimrod or Phoenix Force. That's it. Yikes. So I have priority. It doesn't matter where I play multiple man. But uh, if they play Polaris next turn... In Space Throne, I am in trouble. What crappy locations. And they have priority. Okay. So I'm going to play into the Space Throne because I don't need any uh, Polaris shenanigans.
Which they still could do because I'm about to move multiple men off and they have priority. Move multiple men here. We will play Shuri here. Yep, they got me. Oh. Okay. What happens there? Okay. Oh, nice. They really helped me out. Fantastic. Do I have priority? I do have priority. So, let's see. Let's see. Cannonball can move. Okay, I don't want to play Venom because I'm losing mid. So I'm going to move multiple men here. We're just going to get plus six. I lost this game because if they play... If they play Cannonball, that's 11 points. I'm retreating. I think I need to retreat. Yes. If they play Cannonball, that's 11. Escaped. I can move multiple men here. This was a bad retreat. What I should have done is moved... I didn't have enough time to think this through. I should have moved two multiple men over here. That would have been plus 16. Even if one multiple man moves back because of uh, Sokovia, it should just move right back. So as long as I keep myself space over here... Ah, that sucks. I saw it too late. Right. We have some decent lines. We shall play multiple man. Okay, we're still holding firm. Okay, I get Kingpin. Is it my opponent's? Enemy card, perfect. So I was afraid to snap because... Uh, I didn't know if they would... Perfect. Oh, wow. It, that was shocking. They should have... They should have played... They might not have been paying attention. They retreated too late. Uh, they retreated after my snap. They sh Once the snap's already locked in, you should just continue playing the game out. But I guess I get the uh, bad decision back uh, for my bad decision of retreating that previous game. Okay, here we go. Shuri and Nimrod, Ghost Spider in hand, we have Carnage, we have the pieces. Uh... Starlight Citadel is going to move cards around, but that's okay. Ah, just junk. Uh, 
Okay, we're playing Shuri into Stark Tower. Stark Tower is going to move after this game. We need to track it because that's where we want to play Nimrod. Nimrod will get the double from Shuri and then the plus two from Stark Tower. And in a game like this, uh, Ghost Spider is so important. They might uh, juggernaut me this turn. And we will see how that interaction plays out if Nimrod still gets the Shuri bonus. But then it would only be eight, I think. It will go down to four, and they double that to eight. Systems go. Okay, this is what we are going to do. Juggernaut can get me. Do I have priority? They have priority. Juggernaut can get me. So what am I going to do? Because I don't have space. I don't have space. And Juggernaut can absolutely wreck me. <sighs> so hope it's uh Hope it's cannonball. I mean I'm locked in for two. So if it's cannonball, I always go spider this lane. And I carnage, and then I venom here. But if they juggernaut me, I'm gone. But we're already locked in for two, so play it out. But juggernaut's also a low tempo play, so they might be against that. And they might just opt for maybe an arrow or something. Cannonball. Perfect. Okay, now, is, is that good enough? Is that good enough? Hey, folks, I think it is good enough. So, as you saw, this is actually a fantastic showcase of the, the immense importance of Ghost Fighter. So, I know my opponent can manipulate my side of the board. Because of that, they... I'm saying, no, 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 no. You're not going to manipulate where my Nimrod's going. If I want my Nimrod to stay in the lane it was at, in, I'm going to make it stay there. Because I'm just going to go Spider it right back. So, even though it looks funny to play... Ghost Spider on top of my Nimrod lane when I'm going to destroy it. Against a deck like this, uh, it is super important, as you just saw. Because I would have destroyed uh, nothing. Uh, Nimrod... Would it have mattered? Yes, because I think Nimrod popped... Yeah, Nimrod popped to Central Park. So it definitely mattered. If Nimrod popped mid, I was still going to be fine... Yes, I was still going to be fine, I think, because 12 and 3, yeah, I still would have been fine if it would have popped mid. Or maybe I'm instantly misremembering because my memory stinks. But anyway, uh, this really shows why Ghost Spider is so important, uh, especially against a deck like this, but also just any kind of disruption that the opponent wants to do. Okay, we have zero, or Zerd. Death's Domain is kind of nice for this deck. We have a Red Hulk Sighting. Perfect, then my deck a little bit. And we are snapping. 
Uh, I don't think I want to reveal my hand too early. Yeah, we'll play it. Play it straight in the depth domain. Uh, honestly, Dagger has her uses, and that's another one. Absorb a random Selene hit. Okay, and we have Carnage for any foolishness they want to do in this lane. But I can't do it now, so they may throw a Goblin now. Yeah. So, what I can... I can block this lane right now, but uh, we'll we'll roll the dice. And hopefully they give me one more turn. They do. And I don't have priority. Perfect. I don't have priority. Uh, they are going to want to goblin me. So I will move multiple man here and we will carnage here. And then last turn, I could do something with dagger in the mid. She would get uh, up to nine power if they fill mid. Okay, yeah, they went middle. Okay, so this is where ordering is really going to come into play. Because I can use Deathlock, and I have priority. I can use Deathlock to clear out this goblin, but ordering is super important. So you play Deathlock first. I'm going to say that they can't get into Death's Domain. So I am going to move this multiple man next. Uh, I cannot move m multiple man here or then Deathlock will kill them. So therefore, I can really only move this multiple man over here. And then, uh, uh, this is where I get tripped up. Okay, I still have empty space here because I need to get my dagger down. Uh, order, I just said order. Play Deathlock first, move multiple man, move multiple man, play dagger here and go spider mid. I think that is the proper order. And then they should play the Red Hulk, and I should come out victorious. Perfect. And boy, only lost right by one. Victory. So if I had played Nimrod into Death's Domain, Nimrod into Death's Domain actually would have won right, but then I would have lost mid because of the Hobgoblin. So that's how you navigate a junk deck. You want to make sure you save your Carnage and Deathlock for the end of the game to clean up the junk they sent you. Okay, we have Love Clasher. And a Limbo game, potentially, unless I... Oh, I would have to turn it off this turn. We will... We'll pass that up. Okay, they could also turn it off. Loki deck, in all likelihood. Hilarious, now I can turn it off. Uh, I really want to snap because I have Nico destroy a multiple man. Snap. We shall snap. Uh, I'm playing it safe. 
Uh, there's no need to run any risks of playing to one of the open lanes. Matching their two power. Playing Angel like that is very, very bot-like move. Okay, they're likely to play either in the Angela lane or potentially Mer World if they are up to something. So avoid that lane, uh, any potential armors. They're almost definitely going to play here. And then if they do have an armor, it's a 50 50. So we'll just play into Murder World. But we guessed right for the 50 50. If they were going to play Cosmo, but they didn't. Okay, we have Ghost Spider, so we're definitely using her. So, Ghost Spider, uh, multi move multiple man, play Ghost Spider, and we will play Shuri in this lane. Signaling, so what Shuri does is it signals to the opposing player that we're going to contest this lane. You might end up just giving it up, uh, which I've done plenty, but I want to at least make them fear that they need a lot of power in this left lane. So when I pull out the rug, uh, I'm, I'm still covered. Oh, they played it early. Interesting. So right here, I might not play any cards. I might just continue to move multiple men around. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to play any cards. And what I can do is, I can always still heavily contest this lane, which I think is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move here, move this here, and move this here. Uh, I don't know if the game ends or not, but this should be plenty of power spread out. And yes, I'm weak uh, over on the right, but so are they. So they could attack me on the edges. But I think this should be enough. We'll see. <laughs> and there you go. They went the Sean route, fully expecting, which also uh, fully expecting me to play a high power card because of Shuri. Uh, that's also an opportune time to play a Nimrod as well. So I could have taken that route. And under normal circumstances, I would have, but I wasn't quite sure how the Hawk work turning off limbo on turn five and instead of turn six so i played it su uh super safe and yeah there they couldn't clearly they couldn't contest all three lanes uh so, which is why i decided to go weak in the fourth lane uh the third lane <laughs> Okay, we are up against Sit Ruck Esquire, the one and only. Another pretty good hand. No Thanos or Agatha. Adding cards to my hand is annoying. We are snapping on this. So sometimes I like to play multiple man into Kunlun. Uh... But uh, we'll act like, at least initially, we might be a honest uh, move deck. 
And I have priority. More cards added to my hand, okay. Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward game. Deathlock into Phoenix Force. And then we may end the game with an Eliath mid. So I want to do my best to gain priority, ay, ay, ay. of course. And now it's a one and three. Okay, what is my game plan here? I have five energy. I think I play Typhoid Mary. And a Space Stone. No, I want to play Space Stone mid. The reason I want to play it mid is I, I want the option to move Mary mid and then win with nine with the Carnage. Oh, I'm not going to have priority. Ugh. Okay, this is definitely Surfer. I have seven energy. So what is Surfer plus two? So I can't use Sean. I don't have Ghost Spider anymore for a Dagger. Well, Gladiator, Sean, I don't have priorities, so Sean can actually kill Gladiator. So we definitely bail. We definitely bail on. Right. And do we think nine is enough to win left? Oh, I can actually play Dagger, too, for an, another two points there. I think we roll the dice on this. Yikes. Oh, what a smart move. Hilarious. What a, what a smart move. Oh, this one's definitely going in the in the clips. That is that is grade A. This player is much better than me. Uh, they knew exactly what I wanted to do and use Rogue to keep their Gladiator at nine. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, we have Stockholm Syndrome. Okay, opening hand. Bar with no name isn't the greatest. We will still hold, be patient. If the plan doesn't come together, we can always retreat, no harm. Okay, and we got Ghost Spider. 
So I'm going to play Nico Destroy. Now, what I'm about to do is very risky. And if they have a change location spell uh, or a way to change locations or swip it, switch it on me, uh, I'm going to be in big trouble. So what do I want to do? I need to play mid. And the reason I'm playing mid is because I can then destroy and go spider away uh, the card that destroy. But I am not snapping because this is so risky. All right, so. How am I playing this? I am going Carnage here. Get an extra four points. I am going Deathlock here, which means a Nimrod over here and a Nimrod over here. They're going to move Vision to this lane. So I don't, so 14, 16, 20. So we'll have 20 power here and they'll play uh, Taskmaster over here. Or 17, but I'll have 17, 18, 19. Math is not my strong suit. We will see how this plays out if I can win the tiebreaker. Oh, that isn't what I expected. Okay. Okay. I think I win. I'm down one. I'm down one left. Oh, so close. Three total points. I might leave this in the video too, just as an example of uh, creative plays with different locations and creative ways to use Ghost Spider uh, by yanking her different places. Now, uh, ideally, I would have had Venom. With Venom, it's a win because Venom is no longer five points. Uh, and I easily win that tiebreaker. Okay, up next we have Silvermint. My hand is okay. We have two destroy cards. Shuri to buff. Well, they play Nico, destroy, draw two. I, I'm close to retreating, but uh, we'll play it out. I don't like my hand at all. I need, I need pieces to play, and I have none. But because they haven't snapped, we will stick this out. Pixie makes this pretty scary as well now. Because uh, they can play who knows what. Perfect. We drew a card we needed, but we drew it a turn too late. That said, we do have Ghost Spider in hand. So we will see if we can draw into Phoenix Force. So we have two turns to draw her. No such luck. We will... Deathlock, because that's more stats than Carnage, who would be four. And it's a junk deck, and I've just used one of my junk clearing destroy cards, too. So this is why I say if you snap early, you can get more cubes, because I would have retreated. 
and now I'm gaining a little bit more confidence because I still have Carnage in hand which can wipe out the Hood and the Void. So this is going to be a very unconventional path to victory if I can pull it out. I don't have my key cards Nimrod or Phoenix Force. So we are just going to try to snipe their Annihilus. So if they Annihilus now, on turn 6 I can Carnage the right lane. If they don't, we'll just see. Maybe I can draw into Sean. Okay, I have a decent lead mid. Oh, Sean Chi would be fantastic here. Then who cares about the right side? Uh, okay. That is not ideal. Three cards in deck. They snapped on me, but now it's just to snipe their Annihilus. If they play their Annihilus, I swear it's going to be right to fortify right. It's a six point for Annihilus, 13 for Hood and Void if they send it over. Sniped them. And that is the example of why Alive is in the deck. Victory. Okay, decent starting hand. Red Hulk up against Nico has her destroy spell but we will play that mid because with Atlantis this is a good target for Venom we have we'll snap again Red Hulk doesn't scare me uh, just let it get to whatever astronomical amount. Uh, that can only win one lane. Yeah. Not so much for that. Play Phoenix Force and see what we get? Or do I pivot? I think I pivot. I pivot, but let's play out these turns because I want a single card. I want a single Nimrod in Atlantis, but I don't think that's possible. So we'll just play Shuri to Stark Tower. And then Nimrod. And then we will yank. Yank it away, probably. Which I can no longer do. All systems go. Oh, Venom, I need you. Now this is this is very funny. Do they go for do they just play Red Hulk to Machine World? If they do, I Sean mid. Or I just Carnage if they're gonna play uh Red Hulk right. Nice. Now, I also clearly could have played Sean left. And I don't... I guess, yeah, it didn't really matter. So their best play was to try to win a tiebreaker. But also with Nimrod, they go, okay, if he destroys Nimrod and I play Red Hulk here, that's dumb. Because I just gave him left. 
and a single Nimrod in Atlantis beats my single Gladiator. So they just opted to spread their power. So thanks for making it to the end of the video. That has been the deck guide. Uh, again, you can check the links in the video description for the text version of the deck guide. And if you all like this, I may do more of these deck guides and gameplay videos. Till next time.